Hey, we're here with the liquid tremolo. The secret ingredient will surprise you. Welcome to Hack a Week. Well, a tremolo is basically a potentiometer. We can demonstrate that with a potentiometer. But what the heck is a potentiometer? Well, it's a resistor, and then it has, uh, of course, one end and the other where there's continuity through the resistive material. And then there's also a third wiper on there that can touch anywhere between this point and that point on that resistive material. And that makes for three leads. And this is what they look like. This is your typical uh, volume knob, as people usually will refer to them that don't know. They're called potentiometers, but they have a potential to have differing uh, resistive values between this center wiper and these two points right here. So all the way around this device right here is a piece of resistive material. It has a resistive value of 10K, as it says right here on, on this potentiometer, or on this pot, as they're also known as. So that's the wiper, that's the one that can go all the way around like this and make contact anywhere along that resistive path. And then of course you have you know, a proportional resistive value between here and these two points. And it varies as you move it. So that's how it's wired up. Um, the input's here and it goes to the wiper and then that goes through the potentiometer. If it's pointing up here, when you turn the volume all the way up, uh, it will go right straight through with hardly any attenuation to ground at all because that's what's happening. This is attenuating the signal to ground. So if I turn this all the way down to here, then it's fully attenuated to ground. But I put more resistance between ground and the uh, positive side when I turn it all the way up because now I'm in contact way up here. Also, the signal goes through easier. So there you go. Explained two different ways. So I just happen to have one laid out here in the same manner. This is the uh, resistor right here. This goes out to the amplifier. There's positive and negative. There in the middle is the wiper. That's the positive coming in from the guitar, the negative connected straight through on ground. And um, let's see, let's turn up the amp here. We'll have a little buzz going probably from 60 cycle stuff. Yep, you hear it a little. Uh, but if I strum this, turn it up, there you go. Now if I vary that a little, I get a tremolo effect. So that's all we're doing is we're just basically changing the volume of it in a very controlled manner with rhythm. And um, when you do that, it becomes musical and it's a uh, tremolo. Um, I'd like to demonstrate this better, but um, I need to uh, get something on there to turn that better with. You know what? Hang on. Let me uh, get all gorilla here for a second. Have a little, little fun, maybe. Uh, uh, let's tape this in place. Right there. Yeah, that's good. Now I just got to find a. Move the guitar a little. Gotta find a big ass knob to put on there. There we go. This one should be perfect. the ham radio stuff from last year. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Tremolo man. So you can go fast. Or you can go really slow. And you can alter the depth of it which is how high it goes in volume and how low it goes in volume. Or you can just keep it real shallow and fast. So, that's a tremolo.
We're going to set up a little demonstration here so you can see just uh, what's going to happen. Let's see, I need a, I need a little clear container and I had this laying around. It's kind of cool. That came from the uh, vintage electronics find. <laughs> okay, so got some of that. Into that, I'm going to pour a little bit of uh, Windex. I figure that's pretty much a household term by now for blue colored window cleaner, huh? And now I'm going to fashion up a couple of uh, pieces of wire, and one of these will go right into that ammonia and water solution. Okay, good enough. So I've got a conductor in the water now, right? Got it. Take another piece of wire, and we are going to strip some of this back and the other end. Isn't this exciting? Watching me strip wire. Now I'm going to hook these all up. This is going to be my new potentiometer. Okay, the demo is all set up. I've got the guitar input here, output to the amplifier there. This is now my potentiometer. This little jug of Windex. I'm going to reposition the camera now so you can see what's going to happen next. This is coming from the guitar. This is the ground side and it goes straight through and there's a wire attached to ground right here. That wire goes up here and it's the conductor that we put into this solution earlier. Right here is the positive side coming from the guitar. It's also connected straight through. Right now I can strum the guitar and it's at full volume. So what I'm going to do with this red wire that's connected to this is dip it into this ammonia and water solution, which is uh, a salt, I guess. I'm kind of guessing at the chemistry of this, but it's basically a conductor and it will shunt to ground. And depending on how far into the water I dip the wire will be how far I attenuate the sound. See how that's working? I've already got better control with this than I did with the, uh, the potentiometer. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. So let's, uh, we could take it a step further, maybe reconfigure this a little bit, and think of another way we could make this uh, work. What if we slosh the water around a little bit and put the uh, conductor right near the edge where it would get um, hit just a little bit sometimes. Well there you go. That's a much easier way because all I need to do is shake the jar a little. Then I can vary the speed of the tremolo depending on how fast I shake the jar. So I just need to figure out a way to put this in there with that and that in there and a conductor there and shake the jar and not have it spill everywhere and be able to adjust the speed of it and maybe the depth. Wow. Well, there's a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Let's see. Um, I'm really kind of brainstorming this right before your eyes right now because um, I just kind of all of a sudden got on a whole different tack when I saw that I could do it this way like a spring like that, that this is stuck to, and then just something to just nudge it, right? And so it just kind of gets bumped and it'll just come back each time. So it just gets bump, 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 bump. <laughs> Well now, that's no good, is it? Nobody likes a, uh, yep, well there it is. I need a stronger spring. All right, how about that sucker? Um, pretty good sized spring. 
I'm abandoning the spring idea. <laughs> Never mind. Got a better idea. If I can mount this in some kind of a little uh, device that just holds it, just basically some pieces of wood up against the side of here that will catch this lip on the bottom. Hold it in place like this so it can slide back and forth. And then put it up against this uh, little ellipse I have on this gear motor. And then spring load it with just a simple rubber band right around here. And it's gonna pull against the motor the whole time. And then when the motor runs, the uh, bottle will slide back and forth. There we go, as it turns out, two layers of that plastic does the trick. It allows this to move real easily if pushed way down low right here, which is where it would be pushed on with this little ellipse. Now I just need to mount this somehow to a piece of wood, whatever, leave some room right there for this to poke through and wiggle the bottle. One more chance with a spring. I've got one right here. It's a big fat spring that goes on the bottom there, glue it there, glue it to the bottom, and then just wiggle the top a little bit with the motor. I'm overthinking this. I'm over-engineering this. i got to back off and go back to my stupid little spring idea. It's just got to be a stronger spring. Okay, where's my epoxy? Glued in place. Here we go. Got the spring mounted in a hole in the board, and it can just wiggle around pretty freely now. I like that. That's what I was after. So let's see what's next. Uh, next would be mounting the motor up to make this wiggle a little bit. And um, so I could probably do it right up here somewhere, just right up at the top. Let's experiment with that. Okay, here's a basic setup. Let's start out at three volts. So the little uh, ellipse on the motor does a pretty good job of just wobbling this thing around a little bit. We're all set up. Made a few adjustments to the uh, needle in there. But uh, most importantly, let's see what it does when the uh, motor is spinning it. I gotta move things just a little to get some slack here, I think. <laughs> Liquid tremolo. Now let's see what we got here. Nice. basics now of what to go experiment with with some good old blue window cleaner it doesn't have to be blue I think as long as it has ammonia in it it'll work and achieve the same results 
I would like to get this into a box and configured differently than this, but this is just totally prototype experimental proof of concept. As you can see, it works friggin' great. It's cool. It's fun. It's very dynamic because as you move it around where that point that touches in the water uh, moves around with the waveform that's being generated, it actually changes the way that it fades in and out. It's, it's very unpredictable and chaotic and I kind of like that because it harkens back to what analog really is. Um, kind of disharmonic and chaotic, yet it gets the job done. It got the job done well for years. Damn it. This is some really cool analog stuff, and you need to go experiment with this kind of thing yourself. I encourage you to do that. It's part of why I do these videos, is to get people off their ass from the couch when they're done watching a video and go out to the garage and start finding things they can tinker with and play around and empower yourself and realize you can hack stuff and fix it yourself and you can make things and learn and just have lots of fun doing it. There will probably be a part two to this. I think I'll call this part one because I'm sure I'll come back and revisit this later as I work out different ways to get that electrode to touch the fluid in various manners. If you uh, do a Google search on the uh, one I mentioned earlier, you will find all kinds of info on YouTube. There's three or four videos where people really post, I say all kinds of info, you'll find at least pictures, which are worth a thousand words, of how the inner workings of that older De Armand tremolo actually uh, did its job. Well, I'd say I'm going to wrap it up for this week. And um, Oh, and the other cool thing is I ended up with this guitar from the pawn shop for really cheap. I talked them down like almost 50%. It had a messed up neck. I brought it home, fixed it, and it's perfect. It's an old uh, silver tone. That's right, by Samick. I had to look on who made it Samick, so it's a later model one. Sears and Roebuck uh, carried these. Decent decent guitar, nice action on it. This will probably inspire me to want to play uh, guitar a little bit more. So anyway, till next time. <laughs>